But what kingdoms do the feet of the image made of iron and clay represent today? The Treaty of Rome has brought together in Europe an unlikely mixture in the multitude of nations in the European Union. Is this the final image which shall be broken by the return of Christ? As I explained at the beginning, the Bible is not just history, nor is it only prophecy of the future. The Bible is a living book, and we are living in the days of the Bible now in Europe. Europe in particular is dominated by demonic satanic power. The Tower of Babel is rebuilt with your tax money. In France, the woman and the beast are part not only of Brussels, but your lives today. Babylon and the gateway to hell are in Berlin, influencing how Europe decides the way you and your children will live. Even worse than these last three things I have shown you is the final one. What must be the most awesome, evil thing in the world, described only once in the whole Bible, is the actual place where Satan's seat or throne is. Surely, you say, that was 2,000 years ago. It must have been destroyed if it ever existed. This thing must be so evil, so terrible, that it could be described as the place where Satan himself lives. Truly, only one place in the whole Bible is described in this way. Where was it? In Pergamum. Where is it today? In Berlin, in the centre of Europe. The Bible speaks about it in Revelation chapter 2. To the angel of the church in Pergamos write, I know your works and where you live, even where Satan's seat is, and you hold fast my name and have not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, where Satan dwells. The gigantic altar of Pergamum dominates Germany's Pergamum Museum in Berlin. Originally situated in Asia Minor, that's modern Turkey, the temple at Pergamum with its altar was the center of emperor worship. The price of refusing to acknowledge the emperor as God ritual murder on the altar. The Bible calls it Satan's seat or Satan's throne, and on its steps early Christians were martyred for their faith in Christ. German archaeologist Karl Hümann found it in almost perfect condition in the late 1800s and carefully shipped every stone to Berlin. In 1902, Kaiser Wilhelm II celebrated its erection in Berlin as the proudest monument to his reign, with an extravagant festival to the pagan gods. It is significant that within a short time of this, the history of Germany was to be dominated by a sequence of events which could only be attributed to satanic control. By the 1920s, the German church had become the seat of modern biblical criticism and liberal theology, questioning the truth of Holy Scripture, undermining the very foundations of faith. Just as the move of God's Spirit went worldwide, so did this diabolical lie. The idea was promoted 
that the Bible was not the inspired word of God, only a, an historical storybook, a collection of poetry and myths, especially the incarnation of Christ. God was stripped of his divinity, his word stripped of authority, and the Jewish people of their irrevocable election and calling. With the long European church tradition of anti-Semitism, this led easily to Hitler's Holocaust of the Jews, with almost no protest from the leadership of the church. Hitler was so impressed by the Pergamum altar in Berlin that in 1934 he commissioned a grand reproduction to be made for his Nazi rallies in Nuremberg. Here, from Satan's seat, he decreed death to the Jews and all those not possessing Aryan blood. Mainstream churches officially supported Hitler, but many Germans from all denominations paid with their lives for holding fast to their faith in Christ and for sheltering Jews during the ensuing Nazi persecution.